so next I'm going to introduce Kathy Kelly. Um, Kathy Kelly has worked for nearly half a century to end militarism and economic wars. At times, her activism has led her to war zones and prisons, sometimes with Code Pink. And she has traveled to Iraq and Afghanistan several times and been arrested over 60 times for her activism. Um, so, so happy to have you, Kathy. Well, thank you, uh, Frank and Emily. It's good to see the dynamic duo of the two of you together. Thank you very much to the dynamic duo of Code Pink teamed up with Massachusetts Peace Action. You know, my young Afghan friends have a saying, blood doesn't wash away blood. And when I think of that, I think of the United States history and the foreign policy, a foreign policy based on threat and force and bloodletting, which has said again and again, if you do not subordinate yourselves to fulfill our national interests, we will eliminate you. And then tagged on to that now after the horrible economic sanctions, economic war waged against Iraq, the United States can say, and if you don't believe us, look at the graves of the children of Iraq hundreds of thousands of them, our country, practicing child sacrifice, and all the while trying to pretend that somehow we are always those who are victimized. The hypocrisy is enormous. And so here we are today with 800 bases, with a military budget that gets increased with the um, heads of military contracting firms. I mean, do they laugh on their way to the bank? with their portfolio stuffed. And, and United States people still, to some extent, a bit of sleep at the wheel. And so what we have before us is so, so necessary to, to change. And I believe that sometimes stories are what enable us to make sense out of our reality. So I would just like to share briefly with you the story of a mother whose child had been killed by a bomb following drone surveillance. And she knew that the drone up above must have known that her child was only going to that building for shelter. And so I happened to stumble into the, the funeral for the child and sat in silence and realized that who the mother was because other women were coming and embracing her. And she wore a medical hood and a neck brace and she asked her son to bring pictures of the disastrous day when the bomb had hit the place where her child was sleeping overnight for shelter. And then she asked her son to bring a picture of her child. And there was a girl with round, big eyes and a um, very serious face, but you could imagine her smiling, a little six-year-old girl. And the mother tapped the plastic over the picture and she fixed me with a very definite look and she asked, who are the terrorists? Is she the terrorist? And then her eyes welled up and she whispered the name of the president of the United States at the time, George Bush. Abraham Heschel, a rabbi has said, some are guilty, but all are accountable. And so we do carry this accountability to that mother who asked, who are the terrorists? And then I also am reminded of a, a young mother in, Iraq, in an Iraqi hospital. And, um, you know, they didn't have any electricity in the hospitals. There, there weren't any lights. There wasn't really enough oxygen. And, and her little child was suffering both from starvation and gastrointestinal disease. And her heart started to give out. So people started screaming up the hallway to get a doctor. And he happened to be a doctor. I was sort of trying to interview Dr. Kusay al-Rahim. And the doctor went running and we went after him. And he tried to give mouth to mouth resuscitation to this little infant. And then he stood up and he said, I am sorry, your child cannot live. We have not the plastic, we have not the tube. And the child's nostril was so small that they didn't have a small piece of plastic to inject into her nose. And so for lack of a piece of plastic, while hundreds of thousands of Iraqi children died because of United States economic warfare, that child died. My shoulder was damp from the mother's tears. And then the mother said to me, 
Believe me, I pray. I pray that this never happens to a mother from your country. Was she a terrorist? And so we see again and again and again, innocent lives stolen, wasted. We hear Daniel Hale telling us that he would really almost rather go to jail for the crime of having wasted, stolen, innocent lives. And we must repair the wrong that's been done. We must pay reparations and also commit reparations by dismantling the terrible military systems that have caused so much havoc, so much despair. And I think two words to begin that entire endeavor must be on the lips of all of us, we're sorry. We're so very sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy, for your remarks and for a lifetime of work. Um, we, we really appreciate you. you you're such an, an inspiration to, to so many of us. Um, 